we've been talking about it for a while, a lot of the guys in the locker room, that this league is pretty even. Like, any team can be anybody at this point. And, you know, Seattle doesn't have much to lose, so they're definitely going to give it their all. Welcome back to MLR. Mike Check. I'm Danny Wexman here with AG's Connor Mooneyham. Connor, welcome. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm awesome. I'm so excited to get to catch up with you. We have to rewind to start. Last summer, the first ever MLR collegiate draft, you're chosen first overall. You go to the Dallas Jackals. With the first pick in the inaugural Major League Rugby Collegiate Draft, the Dallas Jackals select Connor Mooneyham from Life University. I know now you've had a little bit of time to probably think about that moment. We caught up with you that day. I know it was so special and, and meant so much to you and you weren't even expecting it. So now that you've had maybe a little time to think about that moment, what stands out to you about that day? That day was, man, just going back to it, it was a, it's obviously an honor to be that pick. Um, and, you know, just how things have worked out with Dallas and whatnot, you know, there's no, there's no hard feelings or anything there. Um, I'm staying in Texas, so that's great. And, you know, I, I really like how things have panned out and I'm, I'm loving the culture over at the AGs. And now we get to fast forward and you are playing for Austin, still in the state of Texas. So I, I think maybe everyone maybe would be interested in knowing how all of that kind of worked and how you ended up in Austin this season. My wife and I, we were getting ready to go up to Dallas and then obviously they, they canceled their season. Um, so we were kind of stuck in a limbo. We didn't know what was going to happen. And a few weeks later, I get an email and, and I was looking at it and I was like, oh man, well, I guess I'm going into a draft again. <laughs> I had uh, two days to kind of contact the teams around the league. And uh, then we were back in the draft. So back in the draft and Austin snags you. When all of that happens, what now goes through your head because it's always you know it's been a whirlwind already and you will always be forever the number one the first number one overall pick in the first ever draft but now like you said you go into another draft again so what's the mindset now you're like all right now I'm playing for Austin well it was like I mean I've done this before so now I'm going into another draft it was great that I got to stay in the state of Texas so my wife and I didn't have to move across the country or anything like that we got to you know drive all of our stuff up here and the next question was just like, you know, how quickly can we get here? You know, and uh, I think it took us a week and a half and then we were all settled in. You get to debut, you have your debut season, which I, I know is all you wanted. You wanted to play right now. AG is three and two and you've basically been racking up award after award every single week. So I'm going to embarrass you for a second. You've played every minute of all five matches. You've earned team of the week honors, performance of the night. This week, you earn try of the week for your match winning try versus Atlanta. So what do you attribute to all of this early success for you? That's a tough question. So uh, probably just goal setting. I like to write down the things that I want to achieve in the year. And uh, one of those things was to be able to consistently make that 23 man roster on whatever team I was going to be on. And um you know, so just ticking off those boxes has really has really helped me keep my mindset on what's going to happen in the future. Okay, I want to hear a little bit more about the goal setting because I think that that's so important when you write it down and you envision it and you kind of bring it to life, right? You, you are um, manifesting what you want. So break down what that looks like when you're writing your goals. Are you alone? Are you listening to music? Are you being really specific? Kind of give me a picture of what that looks like. Yeah, it really depends on the situation. So um, as far as rugby goes, I'm usually alone and I'm usually just you know, I have a notebook and I'll write down the things that I want to achieve throughout the year. And sometimes those goals are pretty long and sometimes they're pretty short. And um, after the draft happened, it was kind of a long list. And, uh, you know, the group that I'm actually a part of, the Athlete Collective, kind of helped me hash out some of those goals. So that's been really helpful as well. Now you are ingrained in Austin. You are a part of this culture. You are a part of these teams wins. You're a major part of them, but it, it takes a team effort. And I know that you are such a team player. So do me a favor and spotlight your team for me. You are five matches into the season. Spotlight your team for me. 
there's a there's a lot of diversity on our team first off uh there's it's actually kind of funny we were talking about it the other day and there's not very many american accents <laughs> in the at hq but the cult the culture is awesome and especially after week one we've all kind of messed together and we've started to learn how to you know work together on the field and off the field and uh the boys you know we're just all you know, you, you see our stories We're we're in HQ, we're playing football when we want to, we're playing a little bit of tennis, we're just hanging out, just trying to, to grow that team unity. And when you have that, when you have that brotherhood, you, you really want to play for each other. You know, when you're on the field, you're going to want to, to put your body on the line for the boys that, that are around you. Getting to know new teammates, guys who you didn't know you were going to be playing with maybe even six months ago. Who are some of the guys who stuck their hands out first, shook your hand, kind of like welcomed you to the group? Yeah, obviously I was pretty nervous coming into this group um, because I came in so late and, and a lot of people already knew each other. So um, it's funny, uh, when the first day I got to HQ, um, everybody said, what's up? And I think the first person to actually like extend their hand out and like ask me how I was doing, how the moving process was, was Roderick Waters. So, uh, you know, shout out to him. And uh, we've we've been really close ever since then. Um, and, you know, it's the same for a lot of guys on the team. There's a lot of rookies that, like me, have all kind of formed a, a little group together as well. I mean, there's not really any any little groups on the team. Everybody's just one one big uh one big brotherhood. And the other thing that we have to talk about, because this team is starting to kind of come into its own, right? Firework finishes for this team and some super thrilling moments. So I was wondering, are there some conversations happening at halftime in the locker room when you guys are coming together and realizing, hey, we need to kick it into gear. Like this game is still ours. What do those conversations sound like? Who's leading them? Give me some details like that. When we go into the locker room, we the, the half times are really long in the MLR. <laughs> There's like 15 minutes, so it's a long time to, to kind of sit and reflect. But um, the backs and forwards usually split at the beginning and we talk among, amongst ourselves and we, we just we talk about what we've seen in the first half and especially those guys that are sitting on the sideline or you know watching the game, they give us their insight as well. And then the coaches come in and they, they chat about what they've seen and uh, we just sort of form a game plan. But it's always it's never tense. It's always like, well, this is a game of rugby, you know, like we're supposed to have fun. Like we, we need to win this game, but like have fun doing it. You do host Seattle this Sunday. That's seven Eastern. They're the two time defending champs. And I know that you are familiar with them probably from watching, from watching highlights. I'm sure you're familiar with some of the guys on that team. They have one win under their belt so far this season. That probably doesn't really tell the whole story. And you know they're going to come into town. They're going to be hungry and they're going to be looking for another win from you all. So let's start with what do you know about the Seawolves? Yeah, we know that they're the two-time defending champs. So, you know, they're not defending champs for no reason. And uh, uh, we, we can't take them lightly, especially because they are coming from a few losses. And... Uh, you know, this team, this team can do, I mean, we've been talking about it for a while. A lot of the guys in the locker room that this league is pretty even, like any team can be anybody at this point. And, you know, Seattle doesn't have much to lose. So they're definitely going to give it their all. And hype me up on Austin, hype me up on your team and what we can expect to see from you when you do face Seattle, because I know you guys are going to be hungry too. You're on a roll. You mentioned that you obviously don't want to be finishing these games in the manner that you have been, but a win's a win at the end of the day. But what can we expect from you this coming weekend? Yeah, we get a lot of guys back actually this week. And so that's pretty exciting. We're going to have a, a few people uh, take the pitch for, you know, one of their first or second times during the season. So that's, that's exciting. You know, a lot of people have been waiting for that opportunity and uh, you know, our game plans have, have been pretty straightforward every single week. We, we've just, you know, we're trying to stick to our rugby, to our game plan and to, to our system. So. Connor, Texas, tell me a little bit about your experience so far in Austin, what that's been like. With COVID, it's a little bit tough to give you the full experience, but um, Austin's a great city. I mean, it's it's so much fun. It's not too humid like the lower parts of Texas. Um, <laughs> and the people are awesome. Food is great. It's just a, it's a fun place. And, you know, especially at our stadium, we have so many things to do for, for the fans. 
you know, we've had concerts, we've had Easter egg hunts, we've had a bunch of things. We have fireworks after the games. So, you know, keeping the fans engaged is really important to us and, you know, kind of Americanizing the sport as well. We have, we do a few things different than other teams. You know, we put our last names on the back of our jerseys just so people can recognize us easily. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great atmosphere overall. I personally love that you put names on the backs of your jerseys as well, so I can appreciate that. Let's touch on that really quick. You mentioned Americanizing the game, and we go back for a second. You were the first overall pick in the first ever MLR collegiate draft. Now, again, that you've seen what it can do and how it can elevate your game. Now you get to play pro rugby here in the United States. You had a direct pipeline. You went from life directly to MLR. Kind of speak to the benefits that the future draft picks will have, like your experience. A lot of people didn't really take the draft too seriously, including, you know, maybe some teams that were that were going to draft a few of these players. And what we've seen so far is a lot of these guys are actually making impacts in the league and which is, which is great, especially for the youth of America, you know, the people that are watching the sport, they're, they're seeing us doing well. And, you know, they're saying like, Hey, this is achievable. This is something that I want to do because of that success of the draft. It's just going to continue to, to grow the sport. All right, Connor, are you ready for some bonus points? Let's go. (laughs) Okay. All right. You are a Cali guy. You went to life. So you've got some, some Southern in you there, but now you're in Texas. So I need to know in and out or what a burger. Oh man. Okay. So Austin actually has in and out here. So that's tough. Um, I'm more of an in and out guy, not going to lie, but what a burger stays open 24 seven. And they have those honey butter chicken biscuits, which are pretty good. Diving into your team a little bit more from your perspective, who's the most interesting teammate? <laughs> I don't, I don't want this to buy me in the butt. Maybe Jeff Hassler. He's an interesting man. Um, you know, a sailor, he's been around the world. He does all of these cool things. Um, he's got the long hair. He has his two front teeth missing. <laughs> so he's uh he's a very interesting guy. He's, He's a cool guy. You definitely can't get in trouble for that answer. That's a great answer. That's very Yeah, shout out to Jeff. There you go. <laughs> what about some nicknames on the team? What's one of your favorite nicknames for a teammate? Me personally, I haven't heard my name in a long time. They just call me Sunshine at HQ. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. We have uh, Mason Cook, the guy with the handlebars. He, he's our sheriff. So we call him Sheriff. I don't think I've said his name in a long time either. I just call him Sheriff. <laughs> How many of your teammates own cowboy boots? That's a tough question. I don't know. Probably about five or six. <laughs> a good amount. Not, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we need to make a team trip and just everybody needs to get fitted and get some boots. I think that's a thing that we need to do. I'm kind of surprised it's not one of like the first things you do when you're brought onto the team is head straight to the store and get a pair with your name on it. I know we definitely have like some Texan themes. Um, You know, we talk about the Texas Rangers. We actually had a few of them speak to us before one of our home matches. Oh, amazing. Um, Wait, tell me about that. Yeah. So I think it was actually our, our debut match on our home field. We had a walkthrough on Friday and the Texas Rangers, a few of them uh, came down to the field and they spoke to us about what it means to be a Texas Ranger and how to be one. And uh, it seemed pretty tough and it's, uh, you know, a very honorable thing to become one. So it's uh, it's something that we talk about with pride, Um, you know, after you're named MVP or you have an award for a week, you you're you're getting that big hat, the big Texan hat and a pin that says Texas Ranger on it. This is amazing. You're breaking news here with me. I didn't know any of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I know you are in tune with other sports, athletes uh, across the country, world. If you could trade places with one athlete for a day, who would it be? Probably Messi, just so I could be in Argentina again and uh, go visit all my friends down there. I'm glad you brought up Argentina. I want you to highlight one moment or, or maybe a couple of moments that you kind of carry in your heart with you from that mission trip. I carry a little, a little piece of Argentina with me everywhere I go just because I drink mate on a regular basis. So every time I'm, I'm drinking that herbal tea, you know, I'm just I'm thinking about the people down there and, and the culture and, you know, all of my experiences that I had in Argentina. What is one reason that you love rugby? 
Whew. Probably just childhood memories because my dad introduced me to the sport at such a young age. He, uh, I've always been around it. And I think that the brotherhood in this sport is a lot different than a lot of other sports, just because of what we go through on a daily basis. And like I was talking about before, when you have that brotherhood, then you want to play harder for your teammates. So I think that that's probably the one, the, the biggest thing that I like about rugby. What advice would you give to someone who's younger and maybe trying to figure out what sport they want to play? If rugby is for them, what do you say to those kids? Play rugby, pick it up. Um, <laughs> like that's, that's what a lot of us did here uh, before joining the league, you know, depending on, I mean, it doesn't matter what age you're at. You can, you can pick up the sport. It's for everybody just because you have that camaraderie. And, you know, I've said it before, my first few years of playing rugby, I, I lost every single game, but I still love the sport. So it's, uh, it's about, it's about those bonds that you, that you make, you know, those, those lifetime bonds. I actually had some friends come out from California from my very first team, uh, this, this past weekend. And, uh, they got to watch our last game live in the stadium. So that was super cool. You know, these, these lifelong friendships that you make, you don't, you don't make anywhere else. That's so freaking cool. They got to come do that. I'm sure that probably oh, so, up a little bit more, right? Yes. It was so fun. Oh my gosh. And I would also like to say, I think things have turned around a little bit for you since losing every single game you played in when you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. A little bit. Thank you for taking some time with me. Good luck this weekend. Congratulations on all your success, dude. I know that there's so much more in your future. Thank you. I appreciate it.